All right. Welcome back to the to the interview room here at Little Caesars Arena in the 2024 NCAA Midwest Regional. We're joined by the Tennessee Volunteers, 82-75 winners over the Creighton Blue Jays this evening to advance to the Midwest Regional Final against Purdue on Sunday. Please remember to silence your cell phones as a courtesy to the team members and your other media in the room. Please raise your hand for a microphone to be brought to you. And when you do ask a question, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. And finally, please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited throughout the Midwest Regional. From, the le from your left to your right, we are joined by head coach Rick Barnes, Zakai Ziegler, Jemai Meshack, and Josiah Jordan-James. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we'll go from there. I, I really thought both teams just played their hearts out, played really hard is what you would expect, obviously, this time of year. And the stuff that uh, Coach McDermott does with his team, I, I tell you, they're extremely, extremely hard team to guard. And um, really proud of the effort defensively. Uh, uh, and again, they uh, do a lot of things that are really difficult. but. Also, you know, we made a run, and this time of year, uh, you expect them to make a run, which they did, And uh, but really proud of the way our guys stayed with each other, did what we had to do, and uh, a great win for our program. And um, these guys up here, I, I just thought they were terrific with uh, a mindset coming in and continuing continue with it throughout the game. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to questions for the student athletes, please. We'll start on the right side in the second row. Get a mic over to you. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Josiah, just as, as a senior, a guy who's been around here for so long, what, what's the personal significance for you for being part of the team that's going to the Elite Eight for just the second time in school history? It's a blessing just to be here. You know, we've put in so much work from, you know, for me for five years and every guy up here since they've been here. And they're great leaders. Um, it's, this is the best group I've ever been around. And so just to have this moment with these guys and making history, uh, we're, we're not done yet. We know that, but we're so happy to be one step closer to our end goal. And it's just, it's just amazing to see all of our hard work finally pay off. We'll go to the first row on the left. Vedant Gupta, Global Media. Coach Barnes, over the last few decades, you've coached some incredibly talented teams. But off the court, there's qualities that help a team make a run to the Elite Eight, like this team. What about the character of these young men on this team, on and off the court, make them so great? Well, if, if you were with us every day, I think you'd understand why I still love coaching so much. Because what you see those guys do tonight, I watch them do it every day. And they would tell you that. You know, we, we do. We go at it probably sometimes too hard, but uh, they've embraced time. Each one of these guys in their own way has brought something to our program when we recruited them. But uh, it's, it's their effort. And again, uh, they demand it from each other. And only the days when they're a little tired, maybe I get on them. But otherwise, they, they do a pretty good job pushing themselves and coaching themselves, knowing what it takes to win at this level. We're going to flip it back over to the right side, starting in the third row here, if we can get a mic on the end. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Josiah, just how big was what Jemiah gave you in all facets of the game without Santi? I mean, Jemiah is huge. He's a cornerstone of this team. The effort and the things he brings on both ends of the floor is, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet all the time, but we know, and the guys in the locker room know what he brings is, you know, not many people in the country can do. We believe he's the best defender. The, these two next to me are the two best defenders in the country in their position for sure. They can guard one through five, two of the toughest guys I've ever been around. But what Jamai brings, it, it, it's hard to put into words, and it doesn't show up every night in the, in the stat sheet. But it's something that he's done his whole life and has gotten, up, gotten him to this point right now. We'll stay on the right side in the fifth row. Questions for the student athletes? Uh, John Sartori, WVLT TV. Jamai, when did you find out that you were going to be inserted into the starting lineup? And then to get this win for Santi and to give him a, a chance to play on Sunday, just what does that do for you guys and how much, how important was that? Um, I actually didn't, I didn't know until I think probably shoot around earlier today. I kind of had a feeling, but I, you know, I just wasn't sure. Um, but the, I mean, I've been, I've been raised to, to prosper in, in, in tough situations. And when my name is called to rise up to that occasion, I wouldn't be doing my job right now as a Christian if I didn't thank God and, and for everything that he's done for me individually and as this, uh, with this team. Because I just, ever since last year, I've been fighting to try and get past the Sweet 16, not just for me, but for my teammates, for Coach Barnes, just to see how much he puts into the team and he doesn't want the publicity for it. Um, and that's something that, that I just love about our program, about, our, about my coach and my teammates. So. Um, you know, God has gotten me here. God has, has given me the ability to to just go into any situation and, and try to make the best out of it. 
you know, my whole goal on this team is, is to impact winning. And if that means I got to start, I haven't started in a minute, but if that means I have to start and come in and do what I got to do, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, I'm hurting, <laughs> my back hurts, I'm tired, but man, it's, it's anything to win, man. It's anything to win. And uh, I just, I, I love this team. And I just love how much we fought, how much we came together in times of adversity through that game. It just shows how much our character is, is going into play in this tournament. We're going to bring it back over to the left, right here on the end. Rick Butler, Rocky Top Insider. Zakai, just what was the plan of attack for the mid-range on offense tonight? Yeah, well, uh, we knew Trey Alexander going into the game that he was a really good mid-range shooter and that, you know, good players are going to get to the, they're going to get the ball, they're going to get to their spots, but we just got to do whatever we do to uh, stop them from making a shot, really. But I feel like we just went into the game with the right game plan and just everybody was locked in. We stay on the left, fourth row with Pat. Yeah. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated for Josiah. Uh, the second half, you guys just hit him with defense, rebounding, kind of staples of what you guys have been about. Can you kind of walk through that effort that you put in there to, to kind of take control of the game? Yeah, I mean, you don't rise to the level or to the occasion, you fall to the level of your preparation. And that's something, if you come and watch us 365 days of the year, those are the staples of our team, something that we do each and every day. And so, in the biggest stage of college basketball where we're going to fall back to our habits, and those are our habits, you know, defensive rebounding or something that you can take, whether you're making shots, playing well on offense, being able to rebound the ball and guard people is, 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 is instrumental. And, and especially in a tournament like this, when shots, you know, may not be falling and, you know, just having those as our backbone is huge. We'll stay on the left in the second row. For any of the players, uh, can you reflect on your logo to rim defense that just really made the difference? Jamal, you want to take that one? <laughs> uh, um, you know, I think that's just, just what we do. It's what we do, and it, I think it separates us as a team. Because, you know, guys think that early pressure is going to happen. It just happens with basketball. But to sustain that for as long as we do, that, that wears on teams. That wears on teams, trust me. When you have a guy like Zakai – pressuring the ball and trying to get at it, and you got to worry about him still in the ball, him him tipping passes. It's hard to run your offense. It's hard to get into your offense. And I think that that is um, something that can't be replaced or, or um, you know, it's something that we need on the court. So um, I think it's, it, it's great that we pressure the ball and, you know, that we're able to do that. But for as long as we, we do it, that's what separates us from, from you know, every other team is it, we sustain it. We'll bring it to the front row here on the left. Vinant Gupta, Global Media, Zakai, for you, you've been through so much adversity off the court to get to where you are today, and you play with so much heart. If you could reflect on the journey that it's taken to get to where you are right now, what can you say about that? And if you, if you could even go back and tell yourself when you were going through adversity one thing, what would you say? Yeah, I would just say, uh, as of right now, I would just say God is great. You know, uh, he's given me these opportunities, and I've just taken as much advantage as I can of them. And, you know, uh, me and Coach G, we had a long talk uh, when I was going through the rehab process, and he was just saying it's going to be dark days, it's going to be ups, it's going to be downs, but I just got to keep my head down and work. And I feel like throughout this whole time, I just kept doing that, and I'm just so thankful to be in this position I am in today. Any other questions for the players? On the right side. Hey, Zakai, Danny Cap, Associated Press Broadcast. Um, if you can just speak to the way that 18-0 run uh, shaped the outcome of the game because uh, you guys were at that point uh, able to give yourself some cushion uh, and able to absorb their their comeback. Yeah, well, we just kept telling ourselves just to be uh, relentless. Uh, we were saying that before the game, just keep being relentless. And we understand that basketball is a game of runs. It's going to be ups, going to be downs. And, you know, we went on our run, but getting back into the huddle, we kept telling ourselves, like, hey, uh, we just got to stay within the game, you know, uh, and just get back on defense and keep doing what we do. And I feel like we just did exactly that. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You can head back to the locker room. We'll continue here with Coach Barnes. We'll start on the front in row one. We can get a mic over there. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Terry Davis, Tri State Defender. Uh, That's a great game win. How do you? What do you tell your players to turn the page quickly so you can face a real tough Purdue team in a really, really tough environment? Well, one I wanted them to enjoy this one. I, I thought I'd, it was a really uh, a, an all-around team win. We had two freshmen that 
we started telling him today, he spent extra time in the film room, say, you're going to play at some point in time. And I thought, again, Freddie had a great assist that got a three. Then Cam went in, uh, got, an, got a possession for us and knocked down a three. I thought those were huge plays. But, uh, um, you know, we played Purdue earlier in the year. We, you know, it was a, a loaded field in, in uh, Maui, Honolulu, and uh, hard fought game. It really was. And, and uh, but we'll, we'll get back at it with them. Uh, you know, I thought we were playing uh, Friday, Sunday, right? It's already Saturday, so we're in, in really playing Saturday, Sunday. But the fact is, and I just heard we got the early game, so. But right now, it's it's, it's a mental prep, and we know that. And uh, but um, again, we, we obviously have great respect for for, for doing. We we played them, but they're they're much better, and I like to think we are too. Let's stay here in the second row. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Coach Tobey didn't have big stat line, but just how how important was he for you guys tonight, especially in that second half? Well, I thought Tobey and and Jemais and even uh, I, I guarantee when I watched the tape, uh, some of those tip out rebounds that Josiah got his hand on it. But those extra possessions are huge, especially there at the end. And big big three-point play. Uh, you know, we went to an empty ball screen and on the side, and uh, Z made the right read. And uh, that was a big play for us. But it was his effort getting on the glass. And I, I thought, again, uh, both Shaq and when we switched off a few times on, on the big fella, you know, that they did their job holding the ground there. And But um, – Again, Tobey has, has gotten better and better and better. And if you really think about it, you know, he and Zakai played on the same, come out of the same AAU program. And neither one of them were highly recruited, but uh, they both play with a lot of heart. And uh, we're just blessed and fortunate to have them. Thanks, Coach. We'll flip it over to the left side in the front row. Yeah, Rick, you hear Jemai say that we've been working all year to get past the Sweet 16 and have not been you know, past this point with Tennessee yet. Do you take a moment to, to sit and enjoy this and, and see what this team's capable of? I'm not sure I'll be able to do it until we're finished. But, uh, you know, a year ago we felt we had a really good team, a, a team that could do some damage. And I'm as proud of, of that team a year ago because when Zakai went down, we had to totally remake ourselves. And uh, I'm not sure Shaq has started since that where he was our starting point guard the last – once Zakai went down. And uh, – we got to the Sweet 16, and and uh, and they from the time they came back, they they've talked about it. You know that they want to get better, want to go further, and they're a close knit group of guys. They they uh, I really felt like in the last after the SEC tournament, they have done a, just an incredible job of of getting after each other and holding each other to a higher level, higher standard. And uh, you know I do my I think I do my job getting after them, but it it's a whole lot easier when they start getting at each other and uh, it happened the other night in the game uh, uh, you know where Dalton was struggling a little bit and they snapped at him to try to snap him out of it and then they talked to him again I mean when you get teams that care that much and can take the coaching from each other it's, it's a good thing and uh, that's where I can tell you the loss in the SEC tournament helped us. Thanks, Coach. Two more questions we're going to use right here in the second round. Larry Leach from the Associated Press. Uh, Dalton, at the beginning of that uh, second half, he had like six points, four assists. Um, Creighton called two timeouts. Can you reflect on his play in particular during that stretch? Well, uh, again, I thought I thought he – tonight he did more. He was trying to rebound the ball. You know, I thought he really got back where he – I thought he was really engaged defensively and not just – thinking I got to score, score, score. And, he, you know, when he gets that look and he's going with it, and I actually told him, you know, when you're in a ball screen, they're coming, you're going to have to let Z have some shots at it. And Z made a couple of them, but he, he's highly competitive. And then when he gets out, uh, our defense broke that game over early for us. We got deflections and got out and ran. You look at them, I mean, they're such an excellent position basketball team defensively. They don't, uh, they don't foul as much as I was asking for them to be called. I mean, they don't. They they just do a great. They do a great job at poking at the ball. But um, they. Uh, but during that stretch, he he got it going, and obviously our guys have seen it. When they do that, they're going to try to play to him. Josh Rush, fan sided. Um, you mentioned that three point play near the end of the game, just under two minutes left. Um, you guys didn't seem to have any fear of Kalkbrenner and his size. Is that something that was part of the game plan to go right after him? You blocked him a couple times on the defensive end, and I know it's obviously early, but do you think that'll carry over to the Purdue matchup with Edie? You know, every game, every team is different, and it'll be a, a different, 
uh, something uh, again once we go back and start digging into it. But uh, you know, they we worked really hard on on drop coverage, but uh, where they drop it because we knew we were going to get shots, and we had to decide: do we want to pull up behind and shoot the three? Do we want to get inside the? And, and all I ask them to do: if you're open behind the screen, I, we expected those two guys to shoot at Zakai and 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 Dalton. But if not, I said get inside the 15 foot area to engage them and from there you got to make the right decision and uh, whether it's a floater or whatever it is you got to shoot it with uh, with with uh, confidence and then uh, Tobey got a couple where we said you the post guys got to get to the rim and uh, then defensively uh, we we weren't going to double team him uh, I thought they were really well prepared to start of the game but we wanted to try to you know get after him with a we we uh, very first play of the game, and we had talked about doubling the ball, and they came off and it's boom, boom, boom. And I'd look, I said, we're not going to be able to do that. And they were so good at it. But we adjusted to it. And again, they're, they're so hard to guard because uh, Greg is such a, a great basketball coach, and he puts them in position. And But we also wanted pace. We wanted to, we wanted a high-tempo game. We felt because they, they, you know, they have been playing a lot of guys 40 minutes. Uh, and uh, we did. We wanted to try to early – get up and down the floor and get it, get into a high possession game. Coach, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank you guys. We're joined now by the Creighton Blue Jays. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Please remember to silence your cell phones, raise your hand if you'd like to ask, ask a question and introduce yourself and your media affiliation. Please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited throughout the rest of the Midwest Regional. Joining us from Creighton, head coach Greg, Mc, Greg McDermott, Stephen Ashworth, Ryan Kalkbrenner, and Bailey, Shire, Bailey Shireman. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Coach, can you please start us out with an opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Yes. Con congrats uh, to Tennessee. Um, you know, they've, they've got a heck of a team, and they've, they've played really well tonight, really shot the basketball well. Um, <clears throat> I've known Coach Barnes a long time. Um, there's a lot of good people in this business. Um, but you have a hard time finding one better than him. So uh, while I'm disappointed uh, that this journey's come to an end, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for him uh, and his program. Uh, he's, he's a first-class uh, person and coach, and uh, he's, he's what's right about this business, but uh, <clears throat> really proud of what we've accomplished this year to get back uh, on this stage. Uh, these guys have been selfless every step of the way, and uh, they've been absolutely a joy to coach. Uh, so you, you hate for that to be over, and, and I hope that uh, once the hurt subsides, that they can look in the mirror and understand um, what they've accomplished. And, Sometimes in sport, the hardest thing to do is what you're supposed to do. And, you know, Baylor, you know, Trey, Bello, and Kalk have been here two years, and Steven this year. <clears throat> we've been preseason top 10 both years. Uh, we've had to carry the weight of that expectation on our shoulders uh, for two straight years, and they've handled it like champions. Um, and that's leadership, and that's uh, focus and understanding who we are. Uh, and stand connected. And these guys have, from a leadership standpoint, the four up here in Trey have uh, 
<clears throat> they've been incredible, and they've been a great example to the young guys in our program. Uh, I've learned a lot from them, uh, having the opportunity to be around them every day. And um, it, it's uh, it's sad that it's over, but man, was it uh, was it fun while it happened. Thanks, Coach. We're also joined by Francisco Farabello. We'll uh, open it up for questions for the student athletes first, please, starting on the left side with Larry. Larry Leach in the AP. Steven, can you talk about their defense from logo to rim and just how relentless it is? Yeah, they're a very talented defensive team. And uh, in the first half, I felt like we struggled to get uh, in the paint and then uh, kick it out for three-point shots or find other ways to facilitate. But I think as the game went on, Kalk did a great job of setting high ball screens, and uh, then we were also able to release the pressure by throwing it into him and letting him go to work. And so uh, throughout the game, I think that we got it more and more figured out, but they're a very talented defensive team. Additional questions for the players, please. Front row right. Matty Marines from White and Blue Review. Either Ryan or Baylor, please. Uh, I guess the rub with this event is that 67 teams are kind of going to experience what you experienced. Can you... I guess what's going through your minds right now as you just try to encapsulate all that you guys have done? Ryan, you want to start us with that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, you you go into this tournament with high expectations and you want to make it as far as you can. And after a loss like this, the loss hurts. And and you you, you wanted to go further, but I mean, you take a step back and look at the journey you've been able to go on with the team and people you've had on your team. And it's hard to do that right now. The further we get away from this game, the more and more I'll appreciate it because this is a very, very special group, <coughs> players, staff, everyone involved. Like, it's just a special, special group to be a part of. And even though it didn't end the way we wanted it to, we're going to look back on this year team group and just for me personally i'm just grateful to be a part of it Baylor, you want to add to that yeah kind of going off what colk said you know um obviously disappointed that we lost um you know we we had big goals coming into the year and um we didn't necessarily accomplish everything we set out to do but um i think you know obviously like i said disappointed and lost but more sad and about the fact that um you know i'll never be able to put on this Creighton uniform again um, I'll never be able to play with this group of guys, um, and I'll never be able to play for Coach Mack again. Um, and I think that's um, really what um, <clears throat> is is going through my mind right now is just the the reality that um, it's over for me. And uh, you know, it's just been an absolute blessing to be able to put on this uniform and play for Coach Mack and play with these guys. So. Look, look, we got a question in the third row on the right. Chris McKinder, AP Broadcasting. Um, Baylor or Steven, could you kind of reflect on what happened during that 18 nothing run that they had early in the second half? And then what does it say about you guys that you were able to cut it to three, but you had to work so hard to kind of get back? Steven, want to take that one? Sure. Yeah, they uh, came out in the second half, a lot of energy. And uh, we also ignited that fire, I think, with a few mistakes to add on top of that, allowed them to get out in transition and, and get their rhythm going. and. Uh, it's always hard uh, to come back from a run like that, but basketball is a game of runs, and I think that uh, you know the biggest thing about this team that I've just learned the whole year being a part of this group is that it's a team with a lot of uh, grit and a team with a lot of experience. And so to be able to answer that run uh, possession by possession, we understand there's no 16-point play, and so you have to approach it that way. And it was. Obviously, uh, exciting and, and proud of this group to fight back the way that we did. And uh, we were very close to, to turning that uh, on them. But they made some plays down the stretch as well to answer our run as well. Back to the first row here on the right. For Bello, uh, you know, Mac and the guys have talked over these last two years about just how hard your job has kind of been to come in from a different school and take on a role that isn't necessarily star-studded. How hard was that to do? in terms of the challenge of doing it every day? And then what has it kind of meant to you to embrace that and accomplish what you guys have accomplished? Um, it, it, I guess it's hard from the confidence standpoint because it's just the, the nature of the role that I had. But I mean, coaching staff and players w made it way easier than, than, than what it should be. Um, 
especially because we are such a such a close group of guys um, that all all we want to do is win uh, and win at the highest level, and just being able to contribute to that and 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 put the 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 things that I can bring to the table um, made it a lot a lot easier. Go back to the left side, third row. West Rucker, 24-7 Sports. Question for Steven. Obviously, basketball is a five-on-five -five game, but but you and Ziegler are both sort of emotional guys, kind of really like to, to kind of to lead the line a little bit and, and go back and forth. How much did you enjoy that matchup tonight? Yeah, he's a very talented player, and honestly, watching his film, it was uh, fun to learn a few things from him and see how, uh, how he defends and how he just does his role for his team. And... Uh, it was a fun experience and atmosphere tonight. Just so grateful to my family, my friends, and Blue Jay Nation for, for coming out in the way that they did. It's what makes playing college basketball so special because you don't get crowds like that anywhere else. And so it was definitely fun. And obviously when you're uh, put in a position to be the point guard, there's a vocal leadership that needs to come through. And he does a great job leading his team. And uh, obviously I, I take pride in the ability to hopefully communicate what Coach Mack is, is wanting for the team to do as well. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, thanks guys, appreciate it. You can head back to the locker room. We'll continue with Coach McDermott. We'll start with Pat in the fourth, brother. Pat Forty from uh, Sports Illustrated. You played, I think it was Triangle and Two uh, there for quite a while. What did you see there and what uh, the, that, that was effective and allowed you to make that comeback? It's called desperation, I think. <laughs> uh, and we went we went to zone uh, for one possession when Kinect was out, uh, and I think we got a stop. And then he came back in, and obviously I w didn't feel comfortable uh, the, with the potential of letting him stand. And we practiced a triangle and two uh, a fair amount in practice. We hadn't used it all year, and uh, so we, you know, we didn't have anything to lose at that point. And it, and I thought our guys executed to perfection, and it. Gave, gave ourselves a chance to get come back and, and win the game. So, um, but that, you know, obviously that 18 0 run uh, was, a, you know, we, we really haven't had anybody do that to us this year. I think it was less than five minutes. I mean, it, it seemed like a long time, uh, but uh, we haven't had to overcome something like that. And, and, you know, we had to pull something out of our hat that we hadn't used. Thanks, Coach. We're going to go to the right side, second row first. John Walker, Omaha World Herald. Mac, you, you've talked all season about how, how much of a joy this group has been to coach. What's going through your mind right now that, that it's over? Yeah, I mean, just glancing at the stat sheet and looking at the names, and you know, a lot of these guys aren't going to be back. Um, and that's uh, it's tough, yet it, it's been such a, I mean, an honor to coach them. I mean, Francisco Ferrobello, when I hugged him after the game, uh, coming off the floor, he apologized to me. And I, I was like, really? <laughs> like, uh, but that's what he's about. You know, he's about giving everything he can uh, to this team and doing everything he can to try to help us win. And, you know, in that moment, he's blaming himself. And, I, and you know, I, obviously, I, there's no place for that. But, you know, Baylor Sharman comes here. Uh, he guarded four men once in a while in the Summit League. A lot of times, he didn't guard anybody. Uh, and tonight he guards Dalton Connect. So talk about progress and talk about understanding after going through the Big East last year one time, like I've got to get better at some stuff and then going to work and doing it. Um, you know, it's he's just been a pleasure to coach and you know, Trey's Trey's gotten better every single year. Um, it's been fun to watch and he's hurting right now, but you know, we're, we're not here without him or where we were last year without him or the year before that without him. And then Kalk's just been the gentle giant, man. He's uh, he just he doesn't like the spotlight. Um, he just goes to work, and he does things that impact the game in, in so many ways. So uh, they've been an absolute pleasure to coach. And and like I said, I've uh, I've, I've learned a lot, and I've become better because I've I've had the opportunity to be around him. Thanks, coach. We'll go to the first row here. Hey, hey Mike Tom Chattel, World Herald. Um, you're certainly known for being able to get guys shots, get them open uh, with scheme and all, all, all the things you do. How hard was that tonight? 
It, it was more difficult because, uh, you know, Tennessee does a good job of upsetting your rhythm. And, you know, Ziegler is, you know, such an uh, elite on-ball defender that it, it upsets your timing of what you're trying to do. So, you know, as you saw, we, we, we tried to have some other guys initiate offense at times. And, you know, while uh, they had a guy not play, uh, you know, that that put – Meshack in the game more, and and he he disrupts things much like Ziegler does. So he ended up on Trey to start the game, Ziegler on 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 Steven, and it was hard to really initiate any offense. I thought once we settled in, we got some decent shots. Uh, you know, we got it to call twelve times down there. Uh, he missed a few that he normally makes, and you know, it's a make shot miss, miss shot game. Tennessee late in the year against. Mississippi State in the conference tournament didn't shoot it well. They didn't shoot it well against Texas. They made shots tonight, and you know that's that's what it comes down to. You know, it, we we were going to have to make more three point shots in Tennessee to win this game, um, and the fact that we still had a chance when those numbers were even um, is a credit to our guys. Final two coaches, we're right here in the third row, and then we'll bring back to the front row. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Just how tough is it? You touched on it, but how tough is it to deal with Jemai Meshack kind of doing the dirty work for Tennessee? Well, he's uh, he's talented. You know, he he uh, he impacts the game so much by not really scoring that much. You know, he doesn't have to shoot. He rebounds it. And he got some. You know, he was he was at the receiving end of some of those offensive rebounds during that stretch. I mean, I think we're up 39-37. Um, we got our first shot. Defense was pretty good, and he goes and you know knocks out a couple rebounds, kicks it out, they hit threes. Uh, he forced a few turnovers. He's just, uh, he's really talented. And, and, you know, Rick does a great job of using him and putting him in spots where he can be successful. We'll wrap it up here in the front row. <laughs> yeah, Matt, just on Baylor, I mean, he was, you know, seemed like he was the head of the snake on both ends of the floor, guarding a first-team All-American, dropping 25, giving you guys a chance. What, what went into that performance and how... How special do you think it was, even in a loss? I mean, to to exert the energy that he had to exert to guard Kanak, I mean, it's incredible. You know, the, the Dalton wasn't guarding him. You know, so so Baylor had to, you know, he had double duty because we needed him to be a presence offensively for us, and we needed him to try to slow him down. And he he did a great job. You know, he hit. He hit one three in transition uh, where he got loose. He hit one against on the triangle of two coming to the left. And then I think the other one he hit in trade along the baseline. So, you know, Baylor, Baylor didn't give up a three to a first team All American. And uh, it was clear tonight there were two All Americans on the floor. Coach, thanks. Oh, one more. Yeah, Mac. Um, you, you finished second, Big East, uh, Sweet 16. Um, yeah, you had three or four guys playing almost all the minutes all year. Uh, Jason Green was not available for a lot of it. Um, did this group get as much out of the season as as they could? <clears throat> yes and no. You know, it's hard to get to this point. Uh, you know, it's hard to play in the Sweet 16. A lot of things have to happen during the year. Um, the the Big East absolutely prepares you for everything you're going to see. Like down 16 to, you know, one of the best defensive teams in the country. You, you don't come back and give yourself a chance unless you've been battle tested. And there's such good coaching and such elite programs in the Big East that we have the belief that, you know, we, we've played against UConn, we played against Marquette, we played against Providence and Villanova and Seton Hall and a lot of really good basketball teams. Um, and we can do this one step at a time. Um, but, you know, our, our, our guys developed as you, as the years have gone on. Mason's gotten better. Jason's gotten better. Uh, we're excited about some of the young guys in our program. Um, and obviously, we, you know, we've got to hit the recruiting trail. Um, and that's a little easier to do than it used to be uh, with the transfer portal. So uh, <clears throat> it's been an incredible uh, four-year run that, you know, Kalk is the one guy that's been part of that all four years. Um, and. Uh, you know, our program is in a position and we're supported uh, by the institution and our department uh, in a way that we need to continue to be successful. So, uh, you know, we, we tell our guys to move to the next play all the time. And while we're going to be disappointed about this loss, um, you know, my staff and I are going to get to work and, and try to put together a group that can get back to this point.
Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Thank your you. time.